from the return of the Starship full stack for the wet dress rehearsal to intriguing updates on the launch license and launch window, the past week has been buzzing with activity. But wait, there's more. Ship 31 encountered an anomaly during the cryo-proof test, sparking an ongoing investigation. Plus, sections of the second orbital launch tower have started arriving at Starbase. And guess what? Starship V2 part has been spotted at Starbase for the very first time. Join us as we delve into these latest developments. Starship 29, Super Heavy Booster 11 Full Stack, is ready for the wet dress rehearsal, the final ground test before orbital launch. Booster 11, following weeks of preparations within the Mega Bay, made its way to the launch site on May 10th. Subsequently, it was moved to the launch pad, lifted with the help of tower arms, and placed atop the launch mount. Booster 11's partner, Starship 29, was moved to the launch site two days later. This ship had several of its heat tiles replaced over the past few weeks, drawing insights from data collected during Flight 3 in March. Ship 29 was lifted and placed atop Booster 11 on Wednesday, May 15th, marking the first time these vehicles were stacked together. The next day, on May 16th, SpaceX conducted a full-stack partial wet dress rehearsal, which involved partially filling the methane and oxygen tanks of both the booster and the ship with propellants. Engine chill vents were observed from both Ship 29 and Booster 11, during which cryogenic propellants were allowed to flow through engine components to condition them to the right temperature before ignition. The test lasted for about 30 minutes, after which both the ship and the booster were detanked, marking the conclusion of the rehearsal. SpaceX performed this partial load test before moving on to a full wet dress rehearsal to help verify the systems with the vehicles on the pad before fully loading methane and oxygen into the stack. The primary focus of the test was on activating the new horizontal storage tanks and associated components and verifying their performance. The next step for these vehicles is the full stack wet dress rehearsal, which involves fully loading propellants into the launch vehicle, followed by a countdown rehearsal to ensure all systems are functioning properly up to engine ignition. The test is expected to occur next week. Starship 31, slated for the sixth integrated flight test, underwent cryogenic proof testing at the Massey's test site last Sunday evening. During the test, both the methane and oxygen tanks of the ship were filled to capacity with liquid nitrogen. Meanwhile, six hydraulic rams on the test stand applied force to the aft section of the ship, simulating the thrust of six Raptor engines. This comprehensive test not only ensures the reliability of the plumbing, but also provides engineers with the valuable data they need to assess the ship's ability to withstand various flight stresses and detect potential leaks in its structure. Initially, the test seemed to progress smoothly. However, during the detanking operations, a sustained flash of light erupted from the ship outside the oxygen tank section, just below the methane tank. Drones were spotted inspecting the ship after the anomaly to understand what exactly happened. It was later determined that the spark resulted from an electrical malfunction within the raceway carrying electrical wiring along the exterior of the ship. The raceway and wiring portion just below the flight termination system box was severely damaged due to the malfunction. The exact trigger of the anomaly and the specific systems affected remain unknown. Potential reasons for the spark and fire include short circuits, faulty insulation, or improper electrical connections. Such anomalies may arise from various factors, including manufacturing defects, environmental conditions, or operational stresses. A lot of electrical systems are required for the operation of Starship components, including flap actuators, avionics and flight computers, engine actuators, communications and telemetry systems, and sensors. It's possible that some of these systems may have been affected by the electrical malfunction. Ship 31 was brought back to the production site two days later and was moved into the high bay. Positioned on a processing stand, the ship is now subjected to a comprehensive investigation. Teams have commenced efforts to pinpoint the root cause of the anomaly, repair the damages incurred, and implement corrective measures to prevent future incidents. Workers were seen inspecting the raceway of Ship 29 following the Ship 31 anomaly. It seems those inspections were part of sweeping measures to ensure that the issues behind the Ship 31 anomaly do not repeat in Ship 29. SpaceX proceeded to full stack the next day without significant modifications to Ship 29, indicating confidence in the ship's electrical systems. During a Space Stark event hosted by SpaceX on May 15, Starbase General Manager Kathy Luders provided some valuable insights into the future of Starship. 
Letters mention that the flight for FAA license is anticipated by the last week of May or early June. SpaceX intends to proceed with the flight immediately upon receiving the license, aligning with Elon Musk's recent prediction of Flight 4 occurring within three to five weeks. The primary objective of Flight 4 is to push Ship 29 beyond maximum heating during atmospheric re-entry, or at least farther than Flight 3. Furthermore, letters revealed that modifications have been made to the guidance, navigation, and control system of Booster 11 to enhance its performance compared to the previous flight. Let's hope the booster will successfully execute a targeted powered landing in the Gulf of Mexico this time. As many of you may already be aware, SpaceX has some exciting plans in the pipeline for Starships. A major upgrade is on the horizon, with the next-generation Starships set to be known as Starship V2s. One of the forward flaps of those second-generation Starships arrived at Starbase the past week. Although the flap's design details are obscured in the images, SpaceX's official graphics indicate that Starship V2 flaps will feature significant improvements over V1 flaps, enhancing control during re-entry. If you're curious to learn about Starship V2s and their successors, the V3s in detail, be sure to check out the links in the description for my previous videos exploring the next generation of Starship launch vehicles. Moving on to recent developments, Flight 5 ship, Starship 30, which underwent six-engine static fire tests at the launch site over a week ago, was transported back to the build site on May 10th. Currently housed inside the high bay, the ship is undergoing further processing in preparation for its flight test. After Starship 30's departure from the static fire test stand, the team wasted no time in dismantling the stand, which had served as the launch pad for Starship's suborbital test flights. The process was completed swiftly, with a test stand completely demolished on Wednesday, May 15. Now, preparations are underway for the construction of a second Starship orbital launch pad in the same location. Foundation work for Pad 2 has already commenced, with piling work currently in progress. The five second orbital launch tower sections that arrived at the port of Brownsville from Kennedy Space Center earlier this year are being delivered one by one to the Starbase production site. During its time at the port, the tower sections received staircases and other installations. Additionally, two more tower sections are awaiting transportation to Starbase from SpaceX's Roberts Road facility inside Kennedy Space Center. Construction of the 8th and 9th sections is also underway at Starbase. Once the foundation works are complete, all nine sections will be stacked at the launch site to complete the second orbital launch tower. Orbital launches from this new pad are expected to commence next year. SpaceX is actively progressing with the decommissioning of the vertical storage tanks at the tank farm. Recently, one of the vertical tanks previously used for storing liquid nitrogen was dismantled from its foundation with ongoing efforts to scrap it. Presently, four vertical tanks remain, three previously used for storing liquid oxygen and one for liquid nitrogen. As the new horizontal tanks prove their functionality during the tank farm infrastructure testing conducted two weeks ago, those tanks will be used to store propellants for testing and launch activities from now on. Meanwhile, Starship 26, relocated to the Massey's site a week ago for static fire testing, is undergoing preparations for testing on the new flame trench. The primary objective of this test is to operationalize the new static fire test stand, flame trench, water-cooled flame deflector, water and propellant storage tanks, and all the propellant delivery systems. Starship 26 and 27 were originally built for the ship-to-ship -ship orbital refueling demo mission. However, that plan was dropped after Ship 27's common dome imploded last July due to a pressure drop inside the methane tank. The reason why Ship 26 was chosen to test the operation of a new test stand at Massey's is likely because SpaceX decided that it would be safer to use a non-flight vehicle instead of risking a flight starship, as it would be the first test of the stand. Once all systems are confirmed to be fully operational, SpaceX will transition static fire testing of starships to Massey's, enabling them to conduct longer and more powerful static fire tests. Now let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. Boeing's Starliner spacecraft's much-awaited crewed test flight to the International Space Station faces yet another delay due to a helium leak discovered in the spacecraft. Originally scheduled for 2017, the Starliner crew flight test to the ISS has been plagued by years of delays attributed to a myriad of technical challenges. 
These setbacks included a fuel leak on a test stand, software issues identified during the first ton piloted test flight in 2019, corroded valves in the spacecraft's propulsion system, the discovery of flammable material inside the capsule, and a weak link in the parachute system. It took NASA and Boeing years to overcome those setbacks. Finally, after fixing all the issues and testing the spacecraft to validate its systems, Starliner was poised on the launch pad on May 6 for its crewed test flight. The launch attempt was however scrubbed due to a faulty pressure regulation valve on the Atlas V rocket's Centaur upper stage. The rocket was promptly rolled back to the vertical integration facility near the launch pad to fix the issue. A week later, Boeing said in its statement that the valve was successfully replaced and tested to confirm it was working properly and they are targeting May 17 for the launch. However, on May 14, Boeing announced the launch had been postponed again due to a small helium leak detected in the spacecraft's service module. Apart from the four main engines used for larger orbital adjustments and launch abort maneuvers, there are 28 reaction control system thrusters on the Starliner service module used for minor course corrections and pointing the spacecraft in the proper direction. The leak was traced to one of those RCS thrusters, where helium is employed to pressurize the thruster's toxic hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide propellants. Boeing and NASA are now targeting a launch date no earlier than May 21 to allow time for the helium leak fix. Mission teams have also completed a thorough review of the data from the May 6 launch abort and are not tracking any other issues. This Starliner crewed flight test will be launched atop the United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 41. Mission Commander Barry Butch Wilmore and co-pilot Sue Nita Williams, both veterans of two previous space flights to the station, will be the inaugural crew members aboard the Starliner spacecraft. They will spend roughly eight days aboard the station conducting scientific research before undocking and performing a parachute-assisted landing in New Mexico. Following a successful crew flight test, NASA will initiate the final certification process for the Starliner spacecraft and its systems for long-duration crew missions to the space station. A Falcon 9 rocket carrying 20 Starlink spacecraft lifted off from California's Vandenberg Space Force Base on May 14, marking the company's 50th orbital mission of 2024 and 35th Starlink mission of the year. The first stage booster supporting this mission, tail number B1063, launched for the 18th time, separated from the second stage 2 minutes and 30 seconds into the flight, and made a pinpoint landing on a SpaceX drone ship stationed in the Pacific Ocean. The Falcon 9's upper stage, meanwhile, carried the 20 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit, where they were deployed about 61 minutes after liftoff. Out of those 20 satellites deployed, 13 featured direct-to-cell capability, allowing Starlink to deliver direct satellite broadband connectivity to smartphones anywhere on the planet. The latest mission brought the total number of Starlink satellites in orbit to more than 6,000. The launch coincided with a weekend of historic solar activity, resulting in a stronger-than-usual solar flare and coronal mass ejection. These geomagnetic storms have the potential to significantly affect satellites orbiting Earth, also giving rise to mesmerizing auroras visible in polar regions. On May 11, Starlink CEO Elon Musk cautioned users about potential service disruptions as the Starlink satellites are under a lot of pressure due to the geomagnetic storm. However, SpaceX later confirmed that all Starlink satellites in orbit successfully withstood the geomagnetic storm and remained operational. Given that this recent geomagnetic storm was the biggest since October 2003, the survival of Starlink through the storm represents a remarkable achievement for SpaceX. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.